Okay, so uh, yes, I'm a designer, and uh, I'm an industrial designer. In fact, I uh, work design for industry and Steelcase specifically. And we design things uh, like these two examples. Uh, this is Think. On the right, it was launched in 2004, and a product called uh, New Black. It's a closed loop textile that was launched about two years ago. Um, these products are actually quite innovative. Uh, they've been a great success for us. Uh, still today, uh, what is it, 13 years later, 14 years later, Think is going strong in the marketplace. But uh, even the most innovative products can be uh, commonplace in, in a short period of time. Now, the thing that's different about these two products is the fact that as we designed them, we also designed a new supply chain and, and in the process influenced the business model itself for both of these products. Um, when we did that, um, we were thinking on a larger level. This is a big D design problem, not a small D design problem. And um, when you think that way, products tend to have a longer validity or sustainability uh, as a business in the marketplace. So these two de uh, definitions talk about design. The one on the top is the one that we think of most often when we think about designers or designing. Um, but the one on the bottom, I think, is the more interesting uh, definition. It, it does make reference to object, but it also makes reference to a purpose of action and fact. And all of a sudden, now we're talking on a much bigger level. This is, this is a systems level design conversation. And when I think about design on that level, the only conclusion I can come to is that everybody in this room is a designer too. You may not have design on your business card, but for the moment, let's all think of ourselves as designers. So welcome to the club. We're just designers of different sorts. So what does it mean to be a designer? So in the 1930s, uh, we might have been called visionaries. And Bel Geddes uh, described the world of tomorrow at the 1939 World's Fair. In the 50s, we might have been stylists promoting sales growth. Um, and in the 60s and 70s, we might have been encouraged to a higher purpose to focus on social and environmental issues. So today, and, and, and I've been hearing this for the last day, um, I think we're being called to yet again another higher purpose. And that's exciting. Now, at Steelcase, uh, we say that we're in the people business, not the furniture business, but the people business. And the design studio there uh, uh, looks to humanize the, the work environment, to, to, to make the work environment a, a healthy place to be. Uh, but in addition to that, we want to uh, focus on protecting and sustaining uh, the world that we live in. Now, what's really exciting about that is we're no longer a tool for industry, styling product. Rather, we're using design thinking um, to actually design our industry itself. And that's big. That's super exciting. Now, every single day, we look at the world around us. We all know that it's changing at an incredibly rapid pace, at a pace we've never seen before. Um, that's also exciting, too. That just means we have opportunity as designers to actually make a change. And there have, been in time, there have been times in my career where that just wasn't possible. So um, what's interesting is I look at the world, and I hope you do too, as nothing but a big prototype. Everything can change. Everything can be made better. And everything is possible. And in that regard, designers are and really have to be incredible optimists. Enthusiastic, restless, never giving up. And that energy that we have for these big looming products or projects is contagious. And on the other hand, uh, the world is cha chaotic. It's changing at a rapid pace. So which squirrel are we going to chase today is a big question. Now, when designers are armed with insight into the big problems that are facing us today, uh, we can be uh, far more deliberate, far more intentional and purposeful in our focus, and we, we can gain the courage we need to tackle the big projects and, and, and big problems that we have in front of us today. So we have to uh, gain focus, we have to um, uh, ask big questions, and in doing so, we as a group, as a community of design, can actually uh, be stronger together than we are apart. 
So uh, Kurt Heidman is a chief engineer at Steelcase. I've worked with him for 32 years. And Kurt talks about the world of possibilities. And so the larger circle, the gray circle, is the world of possibilities. And the outer edge of it is the edge of innovation, the edge of solvability. So I would point out the green lines are indicating that that edge is constantly moving. Every innovation that we make, every change in technology, every shift in economics will actually change where that line is. We don't know where that is on a day-to-day -day basis. Kurt goes on to say that it's design's responsibility, again, that's all of us, it's design's responsibility to move us from the mundane and the incremental past that line. And this gives you some insight into why designers are always coming up with kooky ideas. Well, it's because we have to cross that line so we know where it is. The last thing that we want to do, investing the effort that we put into the work that we, we, we take on, is, is to fall short. We don't want to leave design on the table. We want to wring out every bit of value that we possibly can, and we can only do that by crossing that line. So in order to make that happen, we have to suspend disbelief. We have to be brave enough to voice all of our ideas. We have to be willing to take risks, and we have to know that we are going to fail. And when we fail, that's the quickest way to learn, and it's the quickest way to success. Now, the path isn't straight. I drew it nice and straight in the last slide. It probably looks more like this. It's a convoluted path. And uh, the good news is, is we have a superpower. So every single one of us has the ability to make our ideas tangible. So and when we do that, we allow uh, others to share in the process, and we can co-create. Co-creation makes our ideas better. And when we can co-create, we can make decisions, we can make plans. Now, we do that with drawings. We do that with models. Um, we can do that with spreadsheets. A spreadsheet is a prototype, too. So our scratchings on a marker board, we can play act. You know, there are, all, there are thousands of different types of, of, of prototypes that we can make. Now, the, the key to this is we make these prototypes as a language so that we can learn, and so we can make decisions, and so we can manage risk. Now, one other thing that's really critical about this process, the little orange dots are indicating uh, potential constraints. And the constraints will shift at every twist and turn in the process towards getting outside of the edge of possibility. And you might think that designers don't like constraints, but I actually love constraints. That's the path to actually getting to real, meaningful, and relevant need. Um, but I never take them at face value. Designers always question the constraints that are put out in front of them, always. So this brings me to the chicken. So you probably never thought you'd hear about chickens in a place like this, but um, this is a story I don't even know if it's true. Um, but it's a good story. So uh, you can hypnotize a chicken. If you take the chicken, you place it on the ground, and you draw a line with chalk on the ground from its beak two to three feet away, it will fixate to that line. It won't move at all. You can stomp, you can clap your feet, you can carry on. It will not move at all until you physically pick up the chicken and move it. Well, we have chalk lines too. And they come in the form of capital investments and in infrastructure, uh, financial metrics, the policies, the procedures that we use within our companies. Um, it comes in the form of um, rhetoric in our professions, things that we believe are true and can never change. But we made those things, and we can unmake them. So it's important for us to question our assumptions and ask lofty questions. This is the path towards true innovation and design thinking. So I haven't said much about circularity. It's a complex problem. Uh, I do have the tools to help, and so do others, with design on their business card. Um, but this is my big idea. We're all designers. We're all in this together. We're stronger together than we are apart. Um, every innovation we make is really nothing more than a mere step along the way. 
Um, the ideas like Think and uh, the closed loop textile New Black um, now live inside the world of possibilities. They were precious and on the edge for a little while. I hope they're still valuable. And that if we're willing to set aside our preconceptions, get past the mundane, um, keep our eye on our goal, which is to humanize the experience we have in the world, uh, we can, together we can actually uh, change the world of possibilities. Thank you.